Good afternoon. I'm Bob Holliday, president of the Tallahassee Historical Society. Um, welcome to our 2023-2024 speaker season. With me is Maggie Beth McGrotha, historian, uh, uh, officiando, and student of the Proctor family, and Beth, as we call her, along with uh, Bernice Proctor Venable. Yes are going to be our speakers for the November 9th meeting out at beautiful Mission San Luis. And they're going to be talking about the Proctor family, but specifically Antonio Proctor. Beth, tell us, I mean, why should we know Antonio Proctor? Antonio Proctor was just a pioneer in the state of Florida and in the beginnings of Tallahassee in our capital city. He was here during the Spanish era, and then transferred right on over to the United States era. I, and he was, I mean, let's, we may as well get out front. I mean, he was black. I mean, he, yes. he, I mean, he was black, and he acted as translator and so right. forth for, for, um, for Williams and Simmons when they came in, in, in 1823. And then the Proctor family... Uh, went on and made a huge contribution to this to this to this city. Why should we remember the Proctors and the Proctor family? And you're right. The Proctor family was instrumental in so many different ways. Antonio, from the beginning, he and Dr. Simmons actually um, lived on the same street in St. Augustine. So they had a history, and he had a history with De Governor Duvall even before Tallahassee was formed. So they started there, and Antonio also met with Governor Call and was involved in the Seminole Wars, working with the territory as they were strategizing. Now, we're filming this at the old train station to visit Tallahassee headquarters, and I know the Proctors were involved here. George Proctor went off to the California Gold Rush. And yes, and as we're standing here, as we got here to do the interview today, I thought, wow. It hadn't put it together until we walked up here, but Antonio Proctor, I'm sure, came to see his son off with the other 15 men from Tallahassee and Quincy that were going to find the gold in California. They left here in March of 1849, and so I'm sure we're walking on the same ground that not only George, but Antonio Proctor walked on. The Proctors are not, they haven't exactly been lost to history because they've been mentioned in a yes. no, number of books. I mean, <laughs> some very prominent. We've got um, James Denham's book on Duvall. We've got Jane Lander's book, Black Society in Spanish Florida. We've just got all kinds. And then, of course, Lee Warner wrote a book on three of the Proctor members, Antonio George and George's son, John. And then the Red Hills, it just goes on and on. And there's an architectural legacy here, yes. too, in Tallahassee. There is. You still see so many buildings that George built. You've got the Garden Club's Rutgers House on Calhoun Street. You've got the Knott House. And the Rutgers House, actually, Antonio lived there the last few years of his life. And he died at the Rutgers House. And his was the only obituary of a black person in antebellum newspapers so we hope that you will join us on november the 9th out at uh, out at mission san louis uh it'll be a it'll be a, a a great event we think all of our programs um this year i think are great events and beth we thank you very much this well, we're looking, we're looking forward to and this. wanted to make sure i think you said at the beginning but one of the proctor descendants bernice Proctor Venable and her yeah. husband actually live in New Jersey and are coming down to be involved and share with us at the meeting at Mission San Luis. All the way down. We appreciate yes. that. Thank you, Beth. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I look forward to yeah. it.